Well, you know, there are a lot of children who are not being screened out of the system who, who are having severe reactions after these vaccines, brain inflammation, shock, even death. Vaccines are dangerous. There's mercury in vaccines. There's fetal tissues in vaccines that cause harm. Parents came to me, said my child was fine, had a vaccine, in this case the MMR vaccine, and then they regressed into autism. Hi, Edward. I am Dr. Salk. How are you today? I'm doing all right. Um, got this rash, but that's not why I'm here. Ah, I see you're here for your vaccines. I am, but I'm a little nervous because I've heard some bad things. Uh, Edward, despite what you have heard, vaccines are safe. You have nothing to worry about. I'll let my nurse tell you all about them. Can you please send Nurse Pox in to exam room four? You know, Edward, vaccines have been used safely for over a hundred years. They have actually led to the eradication of several diseases. They are now so widely used that people tend to forget just on how important they are. Uh, Edward, this is Nurse Pox. We all call her Small Pox because she's so petite. She will tell you all about the vaccines and how they work. I'll be back shortly. Hi Edward, how are you today? I'm doing all right. I'm a little nervous. So I understand you're probably nervous because there's a lot of false information out there about vaccines that you probably heard. So before your shots, I'd like to take you around and show you what viruses are and how vaccines work so that you can feel better about protecting yourself and the people around you. Would that be okay? That'd be awesome. Okay, great. Let's go. Excuse me, professor. Uh -oh. This is Eddie. Eddie wanted to learn a little bit about viruses and vaccines today. Could you help him out? Sure, I think we could do that. Hi, I'm Professor Olio. How you doing? Good. Come have a seat. So, a virus is basically a little bit of genetic material with a protective coat. So we can actually show you an example. So like I said, a little bit of genetic information with a protective coat, which makes them actually really hard to destroy. This genetic material you're talking about, is that something like DNA? Exactly like DNA. And this actually is a code on how to make more viruses. But I want you to know, viruses are not alive. We can actually think of them like little robots, which are also not alive and are also really hard to destroy. This is why things like antibiotics do nothing against viruses. Remember that genetic information inside a virus? Our robots actually would have programs on how to make more new little robots. But how does this all work? First, the virus actually needs to get into our cells. I want you to think of our cells as like little factories and the virus needs to actually trick our little factories and get in. So how does it do this? It's almost like the virus knows a secret handshake or a passcode. So it basically tricks the cell and is able to get in. Now, normally inside the cell, our factories are making everything the cell needs to stay healthy and keep the factory going. But during an infection, the virus hijacks all this machinery and uses its robot programming to start making new little robot parts, which in turn leads to the production of new viruses, or again, in our case, new little robots. So, if we imagine the one virus or robot entering our cells, before you know it, you're dealing with an army of robots. And these are actually able to leave our cells and do the process over and over and infect new cells, making more and more virus. But we can fight this with vaccines. Vaccines are actually made in cellular cultures. We should actually go look at one of those now. So, Eddie, what we have here are cells in culture. These are the same sorts of cells that vaccines can be made in. Here, come take a look. Whoa! On the left, the green shows cells that have been infected with virus, whereas on the right, antibodies have protected the cells from the virus. Oh, that, that's really cool. But I don't get how our body could possibly stop an army of robots. Well, this is where vaccines come in. Vaccines are basically just weakened, or sometimes just pieces of our little robots. 
We use these pieces to stimulate the immune system, specifically B cells. Each B cell is able to recognize one little piece of our robot. And when this happens, it actually turns the B cell on so that it starts making antibodies against that little piece of our robot, which are basically just like magnets. This B cell then becomes a memory B cell and is able to secrete these magnets over long periods of time, creating lasting protection. So that way, when a virus tries to get into our cells, it's basically instantaneously coated in these magnets, which are very attracted to them, making it impossible for the virus to ever actually gain entry into our cells. Antibodies aren't really magnets, are they? No, but they actually act a lot like them. Let's go visit Dr. Mumps. Dr. Mumps and I don't always see eye to eye, but we can agree on the power of antibodies. Yeah! Hello, Mumps. Hello, Polio. You remember Nurse Pox. Hello. And this is Eddie. Eddie's here to learn all about antibodies. Hi. Antibodies? Come along, son! Son. Antibodies are similar to magnets, except, you know, they're Y-shaped. And they do have a chemical structure, which is composed of two heavy chains and two light chains. Now, the true beauty of an antibody occurs off the tip of the antibody, in which it can interact with a part of a virus, similar of a magnet can interact to a piece of metal. Now, this interaction occurs via specific electrostatic interaction, which is also very similar of a magnet interacting to a metal. Wow! In our body, there are up to a hundred million different antibodies at one time, being able to fight off hundreds of millions of different viruses. Thanks to vaccines, those viruses are not able to enter the cells. That's all great and everything, but, but what's that? That, Eddie, is an NMR, a super magnet, 20 times the Earth's magnetic field. It helps us to discover and develop the structure of antibodies. And, and what's that noise? Yeah, you better go. Oh, okay. Go, 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 go! Professor Olio, I, I think the thing I am most concerned about is this whole vaccines cause autism thing. What vaccines do is cause lasting immune protection. There is no scientific evidence linking vaccines to autism, and the original evidence that suggested so was completely falsified. Uh, Professor Olio, didn't you have an experiment you were in the middle of? Oh yeah, my cells. I guess it's time to head back to the exam room. All right. Thank you, Nurse Pox. That, that was just absolutely wonderful. Oh, you're welcome, Eddie. I'm glad I could help. So if you have no other questions, I'll send in Dr. Salk. And while you're waiting, go ahead and take off your sweater and get ready for your shot. Great. It, it was nice meeting you. You too. Take care. Bye. So, Edward, now that you know everything about viruses and vaccines, are you ready to get vaccinated? Oh, absolutely, sir. One, two. Thank you.